everyone, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Stay by Post Malone. This song's cool because it's a little bit jazzy, uses some seventh chords, has a little riff built in to the rhythm part, and all in all, for how cool and like rich it sounds, it's actually pretty simple. With that said, it's not exactly like the easiest song, you know, it's not a three chord tune. And if you're still there, if you still need help working on the most basic chords like G, C, D, and all that stuff, I have a couple resources. There's my free ebook, which covers all the fundamentals of rhythm guitar. And there's also my premium course. There's links to both of those down below. So I recommend checking those out if along the way you find that you need any extra help. Otherwise, we're gonna get started with the verse. And for that, we'll need a few chord shapes. Our first chord is F major seven. So for that one, I'm leaving the first string open. Then I have my first finger on the first fret of the B string. And it might be a good idea to just test out both those strings. Make sure that you're curling this finger enough because if this finger's kind of limpy, it'll mute the high E string. We don't want that. Then we have our middle finger on the second fret of the G string ring or pinky finger on the third fret of D and then ring finger on the third fret just above it on the A string. Then I'm gonna put my thumb over the top lightly touching that low string. And if all goes well, you end up with F major seven. And from there we switch to C major seven. And for this, it's a really simple switch. Leave your third finger down and then put your middle finger down right there, second fret of the D string. That's where it would be on a C chord. The only difference between C and C major seven is this finger. This is a C chord, take it off, we get a C major seven. Then we have A minor seven, which is a really easy switch. Once again, we put our first finger on the first fret of the B string and we take off our third finger. So it's a two finger chord. Open, two, open, one. Next up is G minor six. And this isn't like a conventional chord, but it's actually not too difficult. Put our middle finger on the third fret of the lowest string. We mute the A string just by letting the underside of this finger touch it. We're gonna put our first finger down on the second fret of D, then ring finger and pinky on the third fret of the G string and the B string, just like that. So it might be helpful to make the shape like this that bit first, second fret, third fret, third fret, and then adding the middle finger. Either way, just do it a bunch of times. You could even make the shape, slap your lap, and then make the shape again, over and over again, because that forces you to make the shape from scratch. Like if you're just holding the shape, you're not getting good at making it. You know, what if you change to something else, you try to change back, you know, your fingers need to learn how to get in the right spots right away. So. That's the one, you know, different chord in here that you might not be too familiar with. Anyways, we have that shape. And then the last one at the very end of the chorus is F minor. And for that one, it's just like F major seven. So start off by making that shape. And then we leave down these two fingers and we place our first finger on the first fret of the G string and the B string. And if you can get this one, cool, but it's not necessary. We could just get those four and it sounds totally fine. And you can always use your middle finger to help back up your first finger. So let's just practice switching through the chords in order. And then we can add the strumming pattern and that, Afterwards. But first, I want to make sure that we can make the chord switches nice and clean. So starting off on F major 7. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Switch to C major 7. To A minor 7. G minor 6. And then back to the start. last time
here it's different. We go to F major 7, 2, 3, then F minor. And we just do one strum on that on beat one and let it ring out. So that's the chord progression for the verse. Now let's take a look at a strumming pattern that we can use with that one. It goes like this. I'll do it a bit slower. Three and four and. And if that's a bit too tricky, we can break it down. We start off going down, down, up, up. And to make sure you're nailing it, we can do some counting. So we're going one and two and three and four and one and. And for me, I think the trickiest part is going three and four and one and. So I recommend trying that a whole bunch, counting out loud for yourself, just waving your arm down and up, one and two and. You know, it goes down with the numbers, one, and then up with the ands. And that way your arm ends up always being in the right spot at the right time and you'll be able to strum really smoothly. You know, everybody who gets some experience playing guitar, eventually their arm just kind of automatically does that. And people who don't figure that out, they kind of plateau. You know, you hit a certain point where you can't speed it up any further because you just can't do the right strokes in the right order. So start off just like looking at your arm, just going one and two and three and just getting used to that. And then you just got to make contact with the strings. So one and two and three and four and one and. And you take it as slowly as you need to go. Go at your own pace, work out the coordination. And once you get used to it and you can successfully get through that bit a few times, you can try to speed it up maybe and going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and. You know, just doing it like that. Anyways, moving on, uh, we're going to start off on that last upstroke that we just did at the very end of the first half. We're going to go one and two and three and four and. So that was like a miss on beat one, miss up, down, 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 up. And that's not too tricky. You know, just tell yourself miss as you miss the downstroke. One and two. So work that out just like the first half, and then when you're ready, you can slowly glue it together. Try to get through the whole thing. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now before we add that to the chord progression, the very first chord, F major seven, we do it two times in a row, so we're doing the strumming pattern on it twice. The second time we do the strumming pattern on it, instead of just a downstroke on beat one, we go down, up, down. So that's the only time the strumming pattern varies. Otherwise, you are doing exactly what I showed you. But on that very first two measures of the verse, it goes like this. Strumming pattern like normal on the first measure. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. And then on the second measure, instead of starting with just a down on beat one, we go down, up, down. So I'll play through the whole thing. And if that's too much, you could just repeat the strumming pattern two times and it'll barely sound different. You know, there's just that little extra up, down in there. Don't worry about it if it's too much. Anyways, the other thing that we have to add to the verse is that riff. Now for that, since we've already practiced the chord shape, it's not gonna be too tricky. We start off by just strumming the chord. Then we remove these two fingers and we use them to play some notes. We go on the A string, zero, one. So far we have Work that out a couple times. You strum the chord, then you go zero, one on the A string. And then the next half of that, for that, I'm focusing my strum on just those three strings. I strum them and I quickly 
hammer my first finger to the second fret of the D string. And that's where it goes on the chord shape, you know, when we're just making the chord. So that's probably the trickiest little bit of the whole song, it's just getting that right. You know, so you just strum and hammer. Then we pluck the open D string, and then we play the third fret of the A string with our middle finger. So that second half. If we put it together with the first bit, and I want you to just try that like a billion times in a row. Over and over and over again until you can do it pretty easily because it's kind of tricky going from strumming into that. You know, it might take you a while. You might have to just try this song super slowly, pausing when you're changing and all that stuff until you get every part really solid and then slowly it'll come together. Anyways, let's try this now, putting all that stuff together, the strumming pattern and that riff integrated into the chord progression. And if you're not ready yet, you can just watch me do this. I'm gonna do it nice and slow, playing through the whole thing. And that way you'll get an idea of what's going on and you can always rewind it and try it later. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Cool, so that's the verse and the majority of the song. All we have to learn now is the chorus, which is actually quite a bit simpler than the verse. We need one new chord shape, D7. So to play that second fret of the highest string, I put my third finger, my ring finger there, then my first finger on the first fret of the B string, then my middle finger on the second fret of the G string. I'm gonna avoid these lower two strings, just strum these ones. And at the end of the chorus, there's a riff where we go. And that's using an F minor bar chord way up here. We start off by making an A minor shape, but with these three fingers. So instead of using your first finger, you use these three. Then you just drag it way up until your first finger touches the eighth fret of the A string. And you make a bar chord. And to do that little riff, I start off by touching the highest string with my third finger. Then I strum. And the reason why I'm touching the highest string is so that it mutes it. I won't accidentally get it. And then I remove my middle finger on the left hand there, on my chord hand, and I play that fret. So that's like the ninth fret going down to the eighth fret. But we're doing it with a chord shape over it. Then I stop touching that string and I go, so now this rings out as the highest note. And then I just pluck the B string. So we end up getting this little melody on top. And then we would go back into the verse. But if that's too much, you can always just go two, three, four, and then start the verse from there. Anyways, for the most part, it's really straightforward. We start off on C major seven and we do the strumming pattern two times. And remember in the verse, when we played the strumming pattern on F, how we had two measures of F. So the second time we did it, we added that at the beginning of the strumming pattern. We're gonna do that pretty much all the time in the chorus. So on the C major seven, You 
we do it like that. Then we switch to A minor 7, same thing. Down, up, down. Same thing for D7. Then we have one measure of F major 7. And we switch to this guy up here. So I'm going to play through this now nice and slow. You can always just watch it and then rewind and try it yourself later. Or you can try it right now if you think you're ready. Let's start off on that C major 7 chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four. of the tune. All right, so that's the entire tune. That'll get you through the whole song. There's one last thing that I want to show you that makes it sound a bit more like the original recording, and that is when you first play the verse, the very first time you do it. So at the very beginning of the song or right after the chorus going into the verse, instead of playing F major 7 like this, you can play it like this. So I'm barring the fifth fret three strings of it, and then I have my first finger playing the D string, and the tip of my first finger is touching the A string to mute it. And then we just play the rest of the verse like we normally would. And here we would continue with this shape. So we only use this one in the very first measure of the entire verse. And you don't have to do that. That's just a little finishing touch. You know, that's how I would play the song if I was doing it. Because on the original recording, it's actually two guitars, if you listen to it. And they're playing different chords. Like one of them must have a capo or something, and he's playing further up the neck. And I've kind of just combined them to make one part that sounds like the original recording. Anyways, if you need any extra help, don't forget to check out my free resources. There's my free ebooks on rhythm and lead guitar, and there's also my premium course that takes through all the basics. Either way, have a fun time practicing, and I'll see you next time.